So if you're building an app with AI and you're trying to make incredible UI and design, in this video, I'm gonna show you how to get the most out of AI to build you incredible components in your app in our last video, we actually started to build this CV analysis app where we could upload a PDF file of our CV and the AI would analyze it and tell us which things we need to do to improve. Now, if we actually come into our code base, you'll see here we have what's called a components folder. And that's because we are using the CodeSpring boilerplate. We've made a full video about what this is and how this works. But basically, this boilerplate here has all of the code written for us for user accounts, website, UI and design styles, payments already integrated, and database already set up. And as part of that, you have this components folder here. And basically what all these files are, are UI components. So for example, we have a calendar component, we have a draw component. And because we're using the CodeSpring boilerplate, all of these have been downloaded into our app. And all of these components are created using a UI library called ShadCN, which is an incredibly common UI library. And it's got basically everything that we would ever need to create already designed for us. So for example, if we come into here, we have the accordion. So we can actually see what that accordion would look like. And instead of us having to manually code and design and create this style, we can actually come into our CodeSpring boilerplate and you can see we already have the accordion file in here. The same thing comes for the calendar. If we wanted to create a really cool calendar in our app instead of us having to design and code this ourselves and tell the AI make me a calendar we would use the calendar component so again if we come into our code spring boilerplate you can see here the calendar component has already been integrated so let's just say for example we want to now play around with UI well I'm going to come into the settings part of our page and maybe in our CV analysis app we want to actually build a settings page so what we're going to do is come into our code spring account and we're going to call this feature settings and then we're just going to click on it drag this out here and we're going to plan out in a little bit of detail on what we want that page to do how do we want the settings page to work so i just plan this out and what i do when i describe in code spring different features is i like to describe it in terms of a user journey so we've got accessing a settings page user logs into the web app they locate the settings option click on enter in the settings page viewing the settings section these are the different things that we want to have in there like account info security notifications billing we've got a load of other bits and pieces in here that we could actually continue building so how do we actually build something like this well if you're a complete beginner what you would probably do is come into cursor and you would give it the link and you would say well actually in this part of our page in the settings page we want to have security notifications billing and preferences in our settings page and you would just let it go off and code it for you so we're going to let this do this and we're going to see what happens okay so cursor has now completed building these different sections for us so we can actually come back into our template app and you can see it's created us that's something that's kind of okay and it's built us some very basic ui but to improve this we're now going to come into code spring now we've planned out everything that we want for this page but what we can actually do is click on this button here and generate a product requirement doc well now what this will do is supercharge our development this is going to create us essentially a document which is like google translate for code it's going to take this description of what we're trying to build and it's going to write out a document on how to actually build it it's going to go one step further and it's actually going to describe how the back-end functionality should work so at the moment what we've created here is just a very very basic ui that doesn't really look very nice what this is going to do is it's going to say well okay cool we want to build this design but here's some actual technical information on how we would actually do this for example, it's actually building parts of the database, which is going to mean we can save that information to the database or also, for example, how to actually build different features from this. And also it's planned out these different components and it's organized these components in a way that's easy for us to understand. Now you can see here within cursor, OK, because we told it to build us this settings section. Actually, if we come into the components folder, it's created this settings subfolder inside our components folder. And Cursor's done that because it's following along the file pattern of the CodeSpring boilerplate, which makes it really, really easy to find out what each of these files are. Okay, we can see, for example, notifications form, if we come into our app here, okay, is this settings section here. But if you want to have a look at account form, this would be this section here. Now, all of this is really happening because cursor is learning from the template that we cloned in our previous video uh, which i'll leave linked down below in the description from this link here okay so everything's already been set up for us but we're going to go ahead and we're just going to come back and restore back to before cursor built all these things for us okay so what we're going to do now is we're actually going to download this product requirement doc we're going to come back to our code base open up our product requirement doc folder and we're going to take this requirement doc and we're just going to paste it into this folder here so we can now come into our chat and we can say, build me this 
and we can tag that PRD settings, okay? Which means we don't have to write out the prompt of what we want, okay? It's already been written for us. We can also just say for now, for the sake of this video, only focus on the UI, not the databases or APIs, etc. And we're gonna tell it to go ahead and build this. But here's another step that you should also think about as well. One, we wanna say we are using shad cm okay that's the ui library that i described earlier that's this one here we're also going to say two these files are in the at the folder okay we already have a whole load of components that we can use okay so you can see here if we want to create like a draw or maybe some sort of collapsible thing we can use the code from these components and all of that again is if you want to grab a code spring subscription by the way the link is down below you can do a whole load more than just what i'm showing you in this video but uh, there's a whole load of courses as well that's going to show you how to build with ai so for example how to set up databases how to link github how to deploy your app then i would recommend this is the first video real course that you should watch it's going to show you how to build your first full app and deploy it using code spring with databases ui design all all sorts of crazy stuff all of this stuff is in here and you can plan out as many different app builds as you want as well so go ahead and click the link down below this video if you want to grab a subscription for code spring you can see it really helps us plan out the apps that we're building but we're going to go one step further and we're actually going to come to a website called dribble.com but we're going to actually just google uh, settings page and what this is going to do is it's going to go out there and it's going to find us settings pages that other people have built and we can see if there's something that we like and we can actually just give that to cursor and we can say cool build this for us now if we actually come back to our code spring here we can see we are trying to build account info security and notifications so so if we come to dribble we could say account info page okay and what we could actually do is find examples of i don't know a ui for account info and you'll see how that comes in handy later but we're just going to grab for example a settings page we're going to grab this one okay because i think this one's much nicer we're going to screenshot it we're going to come back to our cursor chat and we're just going to paste that screenshot in here we're going to say base the ui design style heavily on this image and then one final trick, we're gonna swap the language model to Claude for Sonnet, and we're gonna send that through. Now what that's gonna do is build us the same files that's going to create us again inside our components folder. It should create us a folder like this called settings, like we did last time. And then what it's gonna do is it's going to base the design off this image. But because we're using Claude for Sonnet, the design and the UI styles are gonna be much better. So we're gonna come back once that's done. So you can see here, it's telling us that it's gonna build us that settings folder. So we're just gonna run that. So if we come into our product requirement doc, you can see that it had designed that before. So it said, okay, we're gonna have the components folder and we're gonna have this settings subfolder. And that's just gonna mean that all of these files are gonna be a lot more organized. And this really comes in handy later when we're trying to update or improve the UI of our app. Because we know when we've planned out our requirement doc, what different components are going to do we know the names of those components and we know what we want them to look like we can actually give the ai context or images of what we want that thing to look like we can tag that specific file and then because of that we're going to be able to make much better changes so it looks like cursor has now finished up and you can see it's been a lot more organized in what it's creating and there we go we've now built our settings page and you can see it's significantly better than our previous version we've got things like pricing plans we've got emails we've got notifications we've got profile and details and this just makes the entire experience significantly better but this is where it gets a lot more fun if we come into the plan for example let's say we wanted to update this section here maybe we're not happy with this what we want to do is actually come into our cursor account and we want to go to the plan settings here okay and because we've used the code spring boilerplate this file has been created in this folder and we know exactly what this file is going to be so if we want to update this ui rather than telling cursor can you go ahead and find this pricing plan we can just tag the at plan settings and we know we're going to be talking about this section here then what we're going to do is screenshot this bit we're going to say in screenshot one this is what we have and then we're going to come to dribble and we're going to just search for pricing page and we're going to find something that we like the look of so let's say for example we want something like this okay we're going to screenshot this and we're going to just paste this in here 
And then we're just gonna say, make it look like screenshot two. And again, we're just going to make sure we're using Claude Force on it, and we're gonna send that through. So it looks like it's now completed that. We're gonna accept it. We're gonna to come to the plan page, and you can see we now have a much closer design to that of the screenshot. Now, if you wanted to get better results, I would go into more specific detail, and I would actually describe exactly what we want it to have. But we can see how we can gradually start to improve the UI and design styles just by using reference images, by using components from ShadCN and integrating all of that with CodeSpring. Now, if you wanna learn how to actually build an app and put all of this together to build specific features, then go ahead and click the link down below in the description and grab a subscription to CodeSpring. If you come into CodeSpring and you click on module four in our courses, we have a full course showing you how to build your first note-taker app from start to finish using a template and AI, and we're gonna plan the entire thing with CodeSpring.